Welcome to College Football Roundtable, your source for college football coverage, including major storylines, playoffs, can't miss game previews, and picks each week. Join your hosts, Dan, Rob, and Jordan at the roundtable for a show unlike anything else. As for Football presents the College Football Roundtable. All right, everybody. Week one of college football is in the books, and it was a wild one. What's up, Trash Talkers? Welcome back to the College Football Roundtable, or if you prefer, the Ring Knocker Radio. Hi, I'm your host, Rob, the Angry Colonel. we got Jordan in Atlanta, Daniel E. Cabeso in Coastal Connecticut, and James from Brigade Review out of Oklahoma. So we're going to dive right into this, and we're going to talk service academy results from last week. Army, want to know, have it beaten Georgia State in Atlanta, 43-10. to 10. Jordan and I were at the game. We got to watch that live. Navy got smashed in their own building by Marshall, 49-7, to 7, and that was an ugly game. I think the second teamers had a better performance than the starters in that one. Air Force is one to know they beat the mighty Lafayette Leopards 35 to 14, which is kind of sketchy because it's a FCS team and you should shut those guys out and score a heck of a lot more points. But I'm sure that'll come up later in the season. Coast Guard Academy won 16 and 0. They were beat uh, the University of New England. Merchant Marine Academy was 49 to 27 over FDU Forum. Bottom line is Army looks good this season. Air Force looks okay, but they played their starters the whole time against a bad FCS team at home, so that could be an omen for uh, things to come, which is still better than Navy, which actually looks terrible, and we have talked about it, and they might not win a game this season, and that would be depressing, but also wonderful, depending upon which side of the line (laughs) you sit on. (laughs) Of note, I had to bring this up just because uh, it, it popped up in my feed when I was uh, checking out sports scores over the weekend. And there was a young man by the name of Ren Helfy, who is 38 for 58 with 538 yards and 10 touchdowns. And he plays for Presbyterian, uh, the Blue Hose, which is a great name for a college football team. But even more impressive was the stats. He hung 10 touchdowns on the opposing team. Now, it was a basketball score. So when you looked at the final score, the game is 84 to 43. But uh, definitely somebody that could sneak into the Heisman discussion if he keeps performing like that week after week. Very, very similarly to uh, uh, Steve McNair many, many moons ago. Uh, the other part of it is is so so much for player management. This guy was a walk-on at Michigan, and somehow they let him go, and then he goes and throws 10 TDs. And I'm not going to say that Michigan might need the help this season, but they're going to need the help this season. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to toss it over to, to Dan real quick. We'll talk about the Commander Chief Trophy status. It should be very, very quick, but uh, here we go. Yeah, so if the Commander-in-Chief's Trophy contest, if the college football season ended today, Army would retain, not because they're 1-0, but because they won it last season and they haven't been beaten for it. Uh, We've got a big game this weekend, however, with the Zoomies traveling to Annapolis to take on the Squids, or Air Force taking on Navy, if you don't call them Zoomies and Squids. But you should call them Zoomies and Squids because that is what they are. Early reports of college game day going to Annapolis have proven incorrect. Kirk, Kirk Herbstreet and crew are headed to Ames, Iowa for the uh, Iowa-Iowa State game. All right, moving on. We got the AP poll this week, top 10 standings. James will cover it. I know that uh, it hasn't been released officially yet, I don't think, because of the long weekend. But uh, let's kind of give a quick rundown of what happened over the weekend. Yeah, that's right. So uh, on the first week, it gets released on Tuesday. And every weekend after this, it'll be released on Sunday. So you guys all have this uh, released already in future podcasts. But for this week, uh, uh, no luck there. But uh, teams that were ranked in the preseason uh, ranking that lost were ranked 3, 10, 12, 16, 17, 20, and 23. So a lot of losses, a lot of shakes, a shake up expected in the top 25. Uh, unranked Virginia Tech, soon to be ranked Virginia Tech, beat number 10 North Carolina. Unranked Tulane almost set up uh, upset Oklahoma uh, on the road, a game that was initially supposed to be in New Orleans. I uh, got moved to Norman. Uh, number five, Georgia beat number three, Clemson. Number 19, Penn State. Uh, took on Wisconsin uh, and beat them in Madison. Unranked UCLA, again, soon to be ranked UCLA, beat uh, number 16 LSU uh, in Los Angeles. 
Iowa beat Indiana. They were ranked 18 and 17. It was the closest ranked matchup of the week, but Iowa uh, came away with it. Here's a big one. FCS Montana beat number 20, Washington. The Huskies are struggling out there on the West Coast. Pac-12 reeling it in. Uh, Number 21, Texas beat number 23, Louisiana. Uh, So that was a a big ranked matchup between a Power 5 and Group of 5 school. And then Notre Dame was number nine, went down to Tallahassee in an instant classic on Sunday night, ABC, uh, and they won in overtime. Let me tell you something. If I'm an FSU fan, and I am now because I have family that goes there, uh, I, things are looking up for Florida State. After like a combined 12 wins over the last you know, three years or whatever it is, ridiculous numbers, uh, you just took the number nine team in the country to overtime with a quarterback that hasn't seen the field in – was it three years now, George? Almost, you almost three years. Yeah, I'm telling I mean, you right now, th- this is seminal football. This is not Taggart <laughs> football anymore. Uh, if they would have played Norvell. McKenzie Milton the entire game, Florida State would have won. Yeah, I mean, Mike Norvell coming from Memphis, it, it, it's his brand of football, and things are looking up in Seminole Nation. So uh, uh, I, I'm happy as a as a new Florida State fan. Uh, as we said, no new AP polls, but we do have some predictions coming out. Uh, so I'll read them to you. Number one, no change, Alabama Crimson Tide. Number two, we're going to be the Georgia Bulldogs coming all the way up from number five after they took down number three, Clemson, in a classic. Uh, Ohio State moves up to number three, and Oklahoma moves down to number four after their scare. Uh, Texas A&M Aggies moves up from six to five, Clemson down from three to six after the loss. The Cincinnati Bearcats and Iowa State Cyclones switch spots after Cincinnati has a sound win and Iowa State has trouble with an FCS team. Notre Dame stays at nine and number 10, the previously unranked UCLA Bruins predicted to round out the top 10 after a big win at Hawaii and win over number 16 LSU projected dropping from the top 10 North Carolina. No surprise there. Other ranked team of notes, uh, number 18, Coastal Carolina and Rob's favorite team, number 19, the Wolverines out of Ann Arbor and Michigan. Hard pass. I hate that stupid pass. <laughs> hey, let, me, let me tell you, Jim Harbaugh bringing in a new era. Wore blue pants on the sideline this week. Oh, no more khakis. Wow. Hey, maybe the khakis yeah. were bad luck. Yeah, uh, maybe. Well, he bought it. Yeah. In addition with his new blue pants, he bought in like a much, much younger coaching staff. So he's 57 <laughs> years old. He's got his average age of his coaching staff other than himself is in their mid thirties. So mm-hmm. I think that's going to. And uh, have a have a much better offensive performance because you can't you can't stick with what made Harbaugh famous when he was at Michigan because that just doesn't work in today's game and so I think you know the revamp is actually going to be helpful but let's talk about games of the week in week two we'll kick it over to Jordan and let's go yep first and most importantly is Army hosting Western Kentucky at Mikey Stadium Saturday 11 30 on CBS Sports Networks opened Army minus four now it's Army six and a half uh, next up, Navy hosts Air Force in Annapolis. Games at 3.30 on CBS. Air Force is a seven-point favorite. Uh, Service Academy games always tend to be close. Um, we'll see how, how good Air Force is and, and how bad Navy really is this game. Uh, other games to watch will be Oregon at Ohio State on Fox at noon. Uh, Pitt at Tennessee on ESPN at noon. Ball State and Penn State might be watching. Ball State kind of disappointed week one Penn State struggled with Wisconsin got the win that could be interesting Iowa Iowa State uh, on ABC at 4 30 and then App State at Miami ESPNU 7 30. All right now that's a rundown for this week but we guess still got to talk about our picks and trap games of the week. Weekly locks. So James what are your thoughts? So as uh, as you guys know, I will not be uh, making the bets this year, but I will be facilitating them. So let's go over the scoreboard from last week. Uh, Dan had uh, Bowling Green plus 27. Uh, that was a miss, although the line much later in the week moved to like 37. It would have been a hit. Uh, but uh, alas, that's a minus one for Dan. He did hit Marshall minus 2.5. They ended up winning by a lot more than 2.5. Jordan, with a good call at Minnesota plus 14, gets a bit of a bad beat at the end. Ohio State ends up winning by 14. You can blame Rob for uh, for jinxing you in the chat there. Uh, but that, that's a 
that's going to be a wash. So uh, that'll be a zero for Jordan on the week, but he keeps the lead. Rob had Stanford plus three. They got blown out. He also had App State by 10, uh, and they covered. So at the end of this week, Dan is and Rob are tied in second at minus one overall. Jordan's got a one uh, leading it out. I will say of note, Rob picked preseason. Kansas under one win. They rushed the field after beating an FCS team. So <laughs> we'll see. They just need one more. Right now it's a wash, but uh, but we'll see. All right, yes. sounds good. Dan, what are your thoughts? Uh, what do you got this week? Yeah, man, uh, this is the week that I take the lead. So I'm going to take – I got two picks and a trap game and a note. So I'm going to take Western Kentucky at Army over 54 points. I think this is going to be a shootout, and it's going to be crazy and entertaining. I also – I'm going to take Purdue minus 33 and a half at UConn. That feels like just stealing candy from a baby, but what can you do? <laughs> I need the win. Um, UConn is dead. They are dead. Purdue is not dead. That's going to be just a murder. It's going to be a murder. My trap game, Ball State at Penn State. I don't know that Ball State is necessarily going to win, but Penn State's offense did not look good. Uh, Ball State certainly could win that one if Penn doesn't get it together. If Penn State, they continue to look like garbage. Finally, if Tennessee beats Pitt, the University of Pittsburgh, this weekend, I'm going to be cautiously optimistic for the rest of the season for the Volunteers. All right, so we got uh, over 54 for Army Western Kentucky. And we got Purdue minus 33 in the hook for Dan. Jordan. That's right. Yep. What do you got? I'm going to take Notre Dame at 16 and a half versus Toledo. Uh, Notre Dame played really good football. Well, let me let me caveat. This is assuming that uh, Brian Kelly does not execute his entire team. (laughs) (laughs) If they survive the firing squad, I'm going to take Notre Dame at 16 and a half versus Toledo. And... You know, they played very well against, a, in my opinion, a very good Florida State team. Florida State's going to resurge this year. They're going to a bowl. Very optimistic about Florida State and what they're going to do. I think Notre Dame played well. I think they have some things they need to execute better on. And, and I think they're going to win by at least three touchdowns against Toledo. So you got Notre Dame minus 16 in the hook. Is that all you're going for this week? That's that's all, I, I I only picked one. I don't know how many I'm supposed to pick. I wasn't here week one. I, I missed the original <laughs> assignment. I'm sorry. <laughs> You can have up to two, so, okay. so but, but, but that's fine. So, uh, so Notre Dame minus sixteen and a half uh, yeah. is is Jordan's pick for the week. Rob, what do you got? All right, so I've got OSU and Oregon. This is a recap of the playoff of a few years back. Uh, OSU is minus ten with the over under being at six thirty, and I would take the over on this one for sure because I think uh, Oregon may come out and play a little bit harder than expected. But I think in typical fashion, uh, Ohio State will rally in the second half and they will score way more than 64 points in this game with both of these teams playing high powered offenses going. My trap game this week is I don't even know if it's a trap game because Nebraska has been playing so pathetically this season. But uh, you've got Buffalo going to Nebraska. I think the Huskers are suffering through an identity crisis as well as like some coaching issues and just, you know, who the who the hell knows what's going on there in uh, Nebraska. But I think uh, they're going to slip up and land on the banana peel. And there's no line on the game just yet. But I think Buffalo will win outright and probably cover whatever the spread is going to be. So that right. is what so I got. So we have, we have uh, over 64 for Oregon at OSU. And we have Buffalo covering the opening, uh, the opening spread for Buffalo, Nebraska. Whatever that spread might be. Yeah, I, I think it's going to happen unless uh, right. something goes unless something crazy happens in the betting line. I'm going to stick with that this week. Hey, folks, that basically covers uh, everything that we have this week for the college football roundtable. Hey, make sure if you are a fan of a team, reach out to us either at Ask for Football or hit up the VTT guys, Trash Talk Nation, and tell us what teams you want us to cover because we're going to focus in primarily on the academies just because it's more relatable to our veteran audience. However, we know that there's diehard fans from all over the country that are serving in the military, and we want to service you. So make sure that you guys give us uh, your picks and thoughts and ideas of what you guys want. And as always, 
we're going to be working to bring you the best content that we can. And if you have any questions, please reach out and we would love to have you. Go ahead, I, I just want to clarify real quick. We will not be servicing anyone, but we will talk about your <laughs> just, just wanted to clarify that. Don't get any ideas. I know you Navy guys out there might have got really excited right there, but that's not what we do here at Azure Football. We talk about football. Yes, and that brings whole new meaning to black skirts as well with the Navy guys. But anyway, uh, hey, we're we're great, to, glad to be here, glad to be supporting you guys, uh, doing some cross promotional stuff, and bringing you as much football action as you can handle. And we will catch you guys next week. Thanks. Go Army, beat them. Thanks for listening to the AskForFootball.com College Football Roundtable. Join the Ask for Football team for our next episode as we bring you more hot takes and college football analysis. We would like to thank our sponsor at Emblem Athletic. Be your own hero for your unit or team today. You can find us at AskForFootball.com and on Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon at AskForFootball. <laughs>